In today's video, we're gonna be talking about vocal comping in Cakewalk by BandLab. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Now, Cakewalk by BandLab has some excellent tools for vocal comping. Now, what is vocal comping, I hear you ask? Well, it's the art of taking several takes of a vocal and seamlessly combining them together in one final take. Now, it's not just confined to vocals, you could use it for any instrument tracks as well, but in today's video, we'll be talking about it in terms of vocals. Now, I'll be walking you through the steps of actually using the vocal comping tools, and at the end, of the video I'll be giving you some best practice tips and techniques so stick around for that now if you like this kind of content all about home recording DAWs plugins gear reviews that kind of thing then please do help me out and subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to hear about my future videos now let's get into some vocal comping Okay, so here we are in Cakewalk with one of my own songs loaded up and I fear I'm about to do something very, very silly indeed because I'm about to let you hear my own vocals untreated, out of context of the song with mistakes and everything. Yes, it could ruin my reputation forever. In honesty, I would rather show you my underwear, so thank you, Lucky Stars, that this is not a clothing channel. Now, if you would like to hear the whole song, I'll put a link down in the description to a SoundCloud version of this song so that you you can hear the whole thing if you are interested. Now, we're gonna to listen to a little bit of it now, perhaps the first couple of verses, and what I want you to notice is these phrases. You can see these uh, sections of waveforms here, and each of them relates to a phrase, like this one here is the first phrase. And that's important because that's what we, how we'll be dividing up our vocal part uh, for our actual comping. So let's have a listen first off. Oh, Mother, how are you today? I hope you smiled along the way And how is Dad? I hope he's doing okay You're probably wondering where I've been What kind of trouble I've been in Well, rest your weary heart alone where do I begin? Okay, so what you're listening to there is the final take of five takes. Now, how did I record the five takes? What you want to do before you start recording and you're intending to do some comping is make sure you have the recording mode set correctly. So you go up to your record button here, you do a long left click on it, you hold left on there, and you'll get the different recording options here. So we want obviously comping to be selected. That's really, really important so that as you record, it makes sure it, it does keep each take. Now what I happened to do with this particular song was I put it on a loop and I let it loop around the song five times. The reason for that is because I feel that if you do it all in one kind of session the vocalist is in the same position so you get the same kind of sonic qualities uh, because the vocalist is the same kind of distance away from the mic etc. Um, you don't have to but that's just a tip. Now once you have recorded that in comping mode you can click on this icon here and the bottom left hand corner and click on that and that reveals all of the different take lanes. Now we're only hearing one at the moment and that is the last one, take five here. Uh, that is promoted as we say in comping to the top. But what we want to do is actually be able to choose different phrases from each of the takes to have in the final composition. So the way we're going to do that is if, if you drag your mouse cursor over one of the lanes like this you'll see um, that new icon appear and that's a kind of a vertical line with three horizontal lines and you can just take that and then drag over a phrase like so and that separates that phrase. So I'll quickly go through a few of them like so. You can see how quick and easy it is to do. Now I have snap turned on at the moment, so it is snapping, but you don't have to have snap turned on and you may want to get surgical and actually go in um, without using snap to get specific phrases or even parts of phrases, words. So I've quickly just sort of divided that up fairly roughly there. Now what I want to do now is have the ability to actually listen to those different phrases and decide which one I want. And it's very, very easy indeed. So I'll select uh, the first phrase here. 
And what I'm going to do in order to listen to it is hit shift and space bar. Now what that's going to do is play on a loop around that phrase and let me listen to it. So I'll do that first of all. Oh mother, how are you today? Oh mother, how are you today? Now, if I want to be able to hear the other, you know, one of the other five takes or other four takes, then after I've uh, started playing by hitting shift and space, I can use the up and down arrows on my keyboard to listen to each take. So let's do that. Oh, mother, how are you today? Oh, mother, how are you today? Oh, mother, how are you today? Oh mother, how are you today? Now I'm listening to this particular take, and if I decide that I want to keep that take, then what I can do is, I want that to be the main take, in other words, I will hit enter, and that promotes that take up to the top, as you can see there. Now, it's a bit odd listening to it in this way, I find, because we're listening to it in complete isolation, and sometimes you want to hear it in the context of the music. You might want to be checking musical uh, qualities of the particular tape. Is it in time? Is it in tune? All of those those sorts of things so you can do that by going up to the top here and hitting the dim solo mode button now when we hit, hit shift and space together it will play that phrase but with the music in the background oh mother how are you today oh and you can hear that that's pretty quiet so you can adjust the volume of that music by going up to edit preferences and then down uh, under audio and driver settings, you'll see um, some different selections here for the dim solo gain. So I'm just going to make that a bit louder by clicking on a minus 6 dB. And I'll click on apply and close. And that's just going to be a little bit louder now. Oh, mother, how are you today? Oh, mother. Okay, so once I've uh, found that I'm happy with the take, I can use the left and right arrows on the keyboard to go through the different phrases. So I'll hit the right arrow now. I hope you smiled along the way. And I'll select a take from there. I'll just go through. Smiled along the way. I hope you smiled along the way. I'll keep that one, hit enter. And then I can move on to the next one, hitting right arrow on the keyboard. And again, just hit enter to select the take that I want. So it's very, very quick and easy if you set it all up in the correct way. Now, with these different clips that you can see here, you can make adjustments, of course, after you've selected them. Say, for example, I'll switch the snap off here and I can drag these around here so I can select the beginning and ending points. As I said, it does have a crossfade and you can actually adjust that crossfade by hitting control on the keyboard or holding control on the keyboard. It changes the icon there and you can just drag your mouse up and down to change the length of the crossfade. And that's pretty handy um, in different situations when you really want to blend those clips together i have to say by default it tends to blend them pretty well indeed and uh, you will be adjusting that crossfade more when you get in really close and you're perhaps isolating a particular word and you want a much shorter crossfade so really really useful tools there now once you have that whole clip that whole comp there um, you can right click on the whole thing so i'll just open it again right click on it and you will notice that there are just some different options there so I could, for example, delete the muted clips and that will get rid of all the ones that I'm not using. And I could, could click on flatten comp there. And what that's done there is, is it's put it all in one take lane there, which you can see at the top here, and it's soloed that. And there it is in that format. You can still go back and adjust, of course, later. So that is vocal comping. And now for some other tips. Okay, so now we've discovered the tools to do with vocal comping, I just want to give you four tips to do with the broader questions relating to it. Now the first couple of tips are about when you should do it in terms of your process. Now I would suggest that you do this before you track or record any harmony backing vocals. And the reason for that is, is often you want to try to be matching the phrasing of the main vocal when you're doing the harmony vocals. And it's no good doing that until you've actually got the phrasing set in stone so to speak so I would definitely do this first and then go ahead and record your harmony vocals the next thing is do make sure that you do this before you start to use the
the Melodyne plugin for pitch correction because the Melodyne plugin is going to analyze that vocal part before it gives you the tools to make adjustments. So it kind of needs that final vocal part in order to do that properly. Now the next suggestion I have for you is don't do too many takes when you're recording a vocal part. I used to do something like seven to ten takes for vocal parts thinking I'll have so much choice I'll be able to get the perfect part but in the end it actually gives you too much choice. It's hard to make decisions when you've got so many choices and many of them will sound probably exactly the same. So when you're spending a lot of time on this it gets really frustrating to have too much to deal with. I would recommend an absolute maximum of five probably four but five to an absolute maximum now the last tip I've got for you is in terms of the choices that you make when you're listening to those takes of course you want something which is kind of musically correct but what I'd really listen out for is character I'm talking about emotion maybe a little croak in the voice something that isn't in all those other takes which is attractive to the listener to hear so definitely when you're listening to those different takes make that a consideration. So I just want to thank you very much for watching this video. If it was helpful to you, you can really help me out by liking it and also sharing it with the Cakewalk community. There's several places you can share it and it's great if everyone can get to learn about the tools in Cakewalk. Now if you didn't like this video then do hit the dislike button twice and if you like this kind of content please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get to hear about my future videos. Now I'd just like to take this opportunity to give a big thanks to the Cakewalk community. They've really embraced me recently and I've had lots and lots of encouragement. I'm so glad to hear that you guys are getting benefit from watching these videos and there's many more to come. And with that said, I will see you all in the next video.